If anything were to happen to you up there, you know, there is no one else. You are more alone than any other human being up there. I gotta tip my hat to astronauts. Every time they launch themselves off into space, it is a risk. But not only that, situations can take a turn for the worst at any time while they're up working in the International Space Station. Astronauts have seen and experienced things you and I likely never will firsthand. So here are some of their stories. We're gonna start off the list with a very spooky piece of audio picked up during the Apollo 10 mission in 1969. But before you hear it, just gonna give you a little preamble. The team was orbiting the moon, testing various equipment, when Gene Kernan, piloting the lunar module, heard something strange. It was an eerie, whistling, whooshing kind of sound. He asked two of his fellow astronauts, John Young and Tom Stafford, if they heard it as well. They all agreed it was a strange noise, saying how it sounded spacey, like space music. So give it a listen. <laughs> You hear that? That whistling sound? Definitely a creepy thing to hear while floating around in the vastness of space. As if floating around in the vastness of space isn't freaky enough as it is. What do you think of this though? Is it just some kind of technological feedback? Could aliens have been communicating with them? Share your thoughts down below. And don't forget, while you're sharing those thoughts, to like and subscribe as well. Uh, Got videos coming at you on the daily. Next up, we have the Cosmos 1408 accident. The Cosmos 1408 uh, is a Russian satellite, or more accurately, it was a Soviet Union satellite launched in 1982 that operated for a couple years before becoming inactive. It was still floating around in orbit up until 2021, when it was destroyed by a Russian anti-satellite weapon test. But the thing is, the obliteration of this satellite caused this mass of space debris that posed a real threat to the International Space Station. At the time of this incident, there were seven crew aboard the ISS, and this cloud of debris was flying through orbit above the ISS, intersecting with its orbit every 93 minutes. There was a real danger here, a bunch of space junk colliding with a space station, not terribly safe. So Mission Control contacted the crew, told them you guys gotta put your spacesuits on and take shelter in the escape crew capsules just in case the debris smashes into the station. Now everything turned out to be fine and at this point there are only about 300 pieces of the initial 1800 still in orbit but still this would have been uh, quite a fright. Pieces of an exploded satellite might smash into the station guys so throw on your spacesuits, hop in the escape pods and hope for the best. Next on the list, we have a series of strange lights spotted by astronaut Leroy Chow. In 2005, Leroy Chow, the commander of the International Space Station, saw something pretty incredible during a spacewalk. It was a pretty routine day. He was working outside the ISS doing whatever it is astronauts do up there when he noticed a formation of lights. He described the lights as being arranged in a line and compared the formation to like almost an upside down check mark. They seemed to be a structured and deliberate arrangement of lights rather than random or natural phenomena. So what were these lights? Was it reflections from debris, aliens? Well, there's no concrete evidence, but one thing is for sure, it wasn't just his mind playing tricks on him because the rest of the crew saw the lights as well. Next up, we have the Alan Bean sighting. Alan Bean, a NASA astronaut, reported seeing something oddly shiny on the moon, something he described looking like shoe leather. What could this shiny thing have been? Bean suggested it might have been similar to glass, but really had no idea. Ever since he mentioned this, people have taken the shiny object idea and like really ran with it, talking about possible uh, leftovers from alien technology on the moon or something like that. Really, there's no solid explanation for what he saw. The term shoe leather doesn't exactly clarify what this shiny object could have been. Was it a reflection of something, a natural element? Uh, could have been human-made material left behind as well. Next, we have the UFO. During the Apollo 16 mission, astronauts John Young, Thomas Mattingly, and Charles Duke were heading back from the moon when they filmed about four seconds of footage. In the video, there's 
a saucer-like object floating above the lunar surface. It looks like your classic UFO, the type you'd see in a 50s B movie or something. Footage was taken from a 16 millimeter motion picture camera shooting at 12 frames per second from the window of the command service module. Now, they didn't realize what they'd captured on camera until after the mission, otherwise, that have probably lost control of the vessel. It's one thing to think you saw something weird in the sky when your feet are like firmly planted on the ground, on Earth, but seeing one while you're floating through space, that would be a, a whole other story. You're in their territory. Some of you may not know this, but it's not just human beings that have left Earth's atmosphere. There are tons of animals that have been launched into space, and many of them never made it back. So there are a number of US and Soviet ships still floating in orbit, the remains of dogs and chimps still inside of them. And some of them are said to still be seen time to time. These animals being sent up into space was referred to by NASA as the Albert Project. Soviet and US governments were putting all they had into the space race. It was one of the most intense competitions in history, it has to be. And because there was so much on the line uh, and sending human beings up into space, without having worked out all the kinks uh, was pretty dangerous. They decided to send up animals uh, first instead. Albert was the name given to several chimps used in these experiments. These missions were to study the effects of space travel on living things, focusing on issues like weightlessness and the impact of high speed launches and re-entries. Sucks that a bunch of animals had to die, but it really did help move the technology forward. Next up, we have the Soyuz MS-10 launch. Uh, this would have been a pretty scary incident. So on October 11th of 2018, a spacecraft launched carrying two crew members, Russian cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin and NASA astronaut Nick Haig to the International Space Station. But just over two minutes into the flight, the crew reported feeling weightless. Turned out there was a booster separation issue. The rocket's first and second stages separated during the ascent to propel the spacecraft into orbit, but one of the four boosters failed to detach properly, so the spacecraft's launch escape system was activated. I never want to be in space and hear escape system activated. That is freaky. This system is designed to rapidly propel the crew capsule away from the rocket in the event of a launch malfunction. Fortunately, it worked, and the Soyuz MS-10 capsule was separated from the malfunctioning rocket. The capsule then made its descent, but at a much steeper trajectory than a normal landing. So the crew actually experienced about seven times Earth's gravity on the way down. Imagine how insane that would feel, especially after having just felt weightless. Now you have seven times Earth gravity pressing down on you. That's pretty extreme contrast. But after the descent, the capsule touched down safely in a designated landing area in Kazakhstan, and both crew members emerged from the capsule unharmed. Up next, we have ammonia leaks. Ammonia is an important substance used in the International Space Station's cooling systems. These systems are responsible for maintaining the right temperature within the station to make sure equipment and systems operate properly. Ammonia is circulated through a series of pipes and radiators to help dissipate excess heat that gets generated by the components of the craft. But sometimes there can be issues with leakage. This is obviously a risk. The main concern with ammonia is that it can freeze into small ice particles in the vacuum of space, which could damage parts of the station. In 2013, there was an ammonia leak on the ISS. Astronauts detected small white flakes of ammonia outside the station during a routine spacewalk. There was a faulty pump module, so astronauts had to walk outside the station and remove and replace it. Pretty scary situation, uh, but the repairs were successful. Next up, we have the discovery of a pretty volatile substance known as moon dust. So moon dust, a lunar regolith, is this fine powdery stuff all over the moon's surface. It's made of tiny particles smashed together by meteoroids over tons and tons of years. But don't let the word dust fool you into thinking the worst thing you can do is make you sneeze. This is not a harmless substance. Moon dust is sharp, rough, highly reactive because the moon doesn't have weathering like we do here. This dust sticks to gear and uh, that's bad news for spacesuits. 
spacecraft and machinery. You know, it's, it's rough and it gets everywhere. I hate moon dust. Breathing or eating this dust would be deadly. It messes with your breathing, can cause severe health problems. So this lunar dust can be a pain for equipment, causing potential breakdowns. And back in the Apollo missions, astronauts had problems with moon dust sticking to their spacesuits, and there were worries about potential health risks in the long term. If it wasn't already abundantly clear, based on all the space docks and, and movies out there, uh, space is a very volatile place. Finally, we have the challenges of lower gravity in space, more specifically the negative effects it has on astronauts' bodies. I always wanted to experience weightlessness, basically like flying, really floating, really, but it looks fun. I'd imagine though it'd be very nauseating after a while. Well, there are a number of negative side effects of weightlessness in space, aside from just an upset stomach. First, the lack of resistance that Earth's gravity puts on us on a constant basis can lead to muscle atrophy. The muscles that aren't actively used, especially the ones that support posture and body weight on Earth, can weaken and decrease in size. Then you have bone problems. On Earth, bones undergo constant stress, also because of gravity. This helps maintain bone density and microgravity, the lack of stress on bones can lead to a loss of bone density, making them more prone to fractures and weakening. Fluids in the body tend to shift towards the upper body and head in microgravity. Uh, this can actually affect the cardiovascular system in a negative way. Some astronauts have even reported changes in vision during and after extended stays in space. Weightlessness also seems to affect the immune system, making astronauts more susceptible to infections. Scientists still aren't 100% sure why that is though. And then of course, there's just the psychological effects for a prolonged time out in space. It doesn't just relate to the lack of gravity, but everything, feelings of isolation, stress, working in a confined space, out in space, as far away from the rest of the world as you can get. Sounds kind of nice, but I think it would be pretty trippy after a while. Once again, I tip my hat. And with all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.